everybody, today we're going to talk about image borders. What kind of different interactions you can do with the images that you upload into Canvas or the images that you import if you're using a URL. So I'm going to be walking through this page that I created and you have access to this page in the description below. So go ahead and visit this page. You can grab my code if you want to. I'm going to talk about various aspects of borders such as colors and width and styles. And I'm going to show you a really sleek tip right at the end. So stick with me and we're going to explore what can you do with borders for your images. So on this page, I have a default image. This is a picture I took a couple of weeks ago here in Orlando. And I like this picture because it actually is blown out in the top. The background's really blown out and I focus on this flower right here. And that's going to help me really emphasize what portion of the picture is the border as we explore these options. So let's explore down here. First thing I do is I have a shorthand. And so you're going to go into the HTML editor and this is the code for the picture that we see here. I have an image and then we have the source. I uploaded this into Canvas and so that's the file name of the image right there. And then I just put it as a width of 300 because the picture is much larger than that and I wanted to whittle it down to 300. And none of that has anything to do with the border. That's just the picture itself and the size of the picture. And next I put in some style right in the image tag and I have border and what you're going to want to do if you're going to create a shorthand border is first you specify the width of the border in pixels and then the border style. In this case it's a solid line and then if there's a color which is optional then you would put the color. If you don't specify a color it's just going to put it as something like dark gray but you can choose any color that you want. And so this is a pretty straightforward border. This is five pixels. It's a solid red line and I picked a red color that matched the red of the flower right in the middle there. Now where you'd put that style in is when you're editing the page, you're going to go to the HTML editor and that's going to be in the lower right hand corner here. And so here you can see in the second picture, the one we were just looking at, I'm going to isolate that a little bit and you can see my image. It's right here. This is actually all my image. I have my URL, which in this case I uploaded the image into Canvas. And so it's saying where on Canvas, where in my course it's located. It has the width and the height. And then you can see that I put the style right here. So you just go style equals quotation marks and then you would put your border properties and then close out that quotation mark. And so these properties are what we're going to explore today. What are the types of widths and colors and types of border that you can add to your pictures? So that's a straight line, but let's look at different types of styles. And so here we're going to look at a dotted border. And so I didn't specify a color and so it's just choosing that dark gray color. It's 10 pixels because I specified right here the border width. I put 10 pixels and then I put a border style of dotted. And so that creates an interesting effect, a dotted border that is 10 pixels wide. And it's just the default color. And I kept the rest of these here in this section as the default color. And so this one I changed from dotted to dashed. And I'm going to keep all of these as 10 pixels. But the only thing I changed here is for the border style, I said dashed instead of dotted. And so you can see that dashed effect right there. This is a solid line, just like we explored with that red border up above. So it's a solid 10 pixel border. Down here is a double border. And so again, I specify 10 pixels. And so it takes 10 pixels. And I actually looked at it and it's more like 11 pixels. So it's about four pixels for these two dashed lines. And then there's three pixels for that white line in there. At least when I was looking, when I really zoomed in. And so if I were to have 20 pixels, then it essentially takes that 20, it divides it by three, and then it creates three lines. Two of them will be the color that you specify, or if you don't specify a color, then it'll be that default color, and then it'll have a white stripe in between there. And so it gives the effect that there is a double border. And if you do go with a double border, you're probably going to want it to be thicker than you would a single solid border, just because the lines are a lot thinner. And so if you want to go with a 10 pixel solid border, but then you think I want it to be a double border, you might consider making that more like 20 pixels, maybe 25 pixels. The next one here is called groove. This is the groove style. And you can see that it creates something of a double border. There's two different shades. And with groove, you can see on the top and the left, then it's um, dark on the outside, light on the inside. And then for the right and the bottom, it's light on the outside and it's dark on the inside. So that's what the groove effect is. And this is just with the default color. And if you look down here, then ridge is the opposite of groove. And so 
instead of having the top and the left be dark on the outside, it's now light on the outside and it's dark on the inside. And then the right and the bottom would be dark on the outside, light on the inside. So it gives it something of a 3D bevel effect, especially in the um, lower left hand and upper right corners. I personally have never used this border style or the ridge, the groove or the ridge border styles, but it's available if you want. So as we scroll down here, we have something called inset. And I think that inset and the next one is probably a better option than the ridge and the groove. And this makes it so the upper and left hand side is dark. The right and lower hand side is just light. You don't have double borders or anything. And then outset is the exact opposite. And so the right and the bottom are dark, the upper and the left are light. So if you want a little bit of a bevel texture to your border, but you don't want to overdo it, then inset and outset are probably the options that you would like. Now this funky thing down here, I mean, this is an ugly border, but I just wanted to emphasize that you can select border style in your CSS, and then you can have different border styles for each of the sides of your image. In this case, so we go northeast, southwest. So the top one is dotted, and then you have dashed, and then you have solid, and then you have double. Now we're going to look at the border width. And so those past ones that we looked at, those were all 10 pixels, but then you can specify, here's a solid. We're just going to look at solid ones for the moment. Here's a five pixel solid one, which we saw at the beginning. Here's one where the border width is medium. Instead of a pixel value, it's medium. And then I can set another pixel value, which is two pixels. So that's a real thin frame. And then I can also set it to something like thick. And then you can set it really thick. And then you just put the pixel like 20 pixels or 50 pixels or whatever it is. If you wanted to have, for some reason, a different thickness around each of the four edges of your image, then here you can see border width. And I have the top as five pixels. The right is five pixels more, so that's 10 pixels. The bottom would be 15, the left would be 20. And so from northeast, southwest, it increases in an increment of five pixels. Now, personally, I don't know when you would ever use that, but just know that this is an option. Now let's look at border colors. So we looked at width and styles. The colors is really simple. We're gonna go back to the shorthand, and here I have border and shorthand. And so I didn't put border width, five pixels. I didn't put border style, solid, and then border color as the color. Instead, I just have this class border, and then I put it all together. And so I have the thickness, five pixels. I have the style is solid, and then I have the color. And this is a blue color. And then here I have more of a rose color. And then finally I have a lavender color. Other than the color, these borders are all identical. They're all the same but you can modify these. I can have this be a 15 pixel border that's dotted or dashed, and then I can choose the color if I want to. And so this is probably the easiest way to set up your borders. Now in terms of CSS on the web, if you specify a border, the only thing that's actually required is this border style. So you need to identify that it's a solid line or identify that it's dashed or dotted or ridged or whatever. However, in Canvas, you also need to determine the width of the border. That's something that I've discovered. I've never read it anywhere, but I've just noticed that you can't put a border, a solid border, without having a width. And that width could be one pixel, two pixels, five, 10, 50. As long as you have those two items, then it'll draw a border for you. And I would just suggest pick your own color. If you go to a website such as um, Coolers, if you Google Coolers, it's like colors with two O's up front. They have these generators that I've shown in other videos. If I hit spacebar, then I can get different color schemes. And if I have a color that I really like, I can look at different shades and tints for that color. Suppose I like this corn color, but I want to darken that up. And now I have an olive or this tomato. These are very food colors, aren't they? And here's a red barn. So we're looking at farm and food. And so then I would just select that color. You can copy that and I can even modify it a little bit if I like that color, but I just need to tint it a little bit or maybe change the hue slightly. Then I would copy that value that they have and that's what I would put into Canvas. So a moment ago I talked about how you can have different borders for the top and the bottom and the left and the right, for example. And let's look a little bit more at what that would look like. Here's a picture where the top and the bottom are dotted, the left and the right are solid. So let's see how I created this border for this picture. I have my image right here, 
and then I have the style, the border color. It doesn't matter what order. Usually I would put the border color last. I don't know why I did it this way, but this is that lavender color. And so I'm saying this is the color that I want. The width is five pixels. Normally you'd probably want to put the width first and the color last. And then I have the border style. And so I have dotted, solid, dotted, and solid. And so it goes from top, right, bottom, left, dotted, solid, bottom is dotted again, and then solid. Another way that I could write that instead of going dotted, solid, dotted, solid, is you can abbreviate that and just put dotted solid. And what that does is if there's two values for the border style, it's going to take that first value and it's going to apply it to the top and the bottom. And it's going to take that second value and it's going to apply it to the second, to the right and to the left. So that's essentially the same code that I put over here, but it's just a quicker way that you can do that. And finally down here, I can put, here's the border style and I have dotted up top and then I have solid, then I have double, and then I have dashed. So again, this is a pretty ugly application, but the concept is that you don't have to have the same border, a uniform border around your image. You have some flexibility and some creativity. Now let's look at something really awesome, and that's rounded corners. And so I'm going to give a shout out to my son. He is learning photography. He's 10 years old, and he just discovered an old Canon PowerShot click and point camera in my drawer and he asked if he could use that and so I took him over to Disney Springs and we shot some photos. I've been teaching him about the rule of thirds and composition and this is one of the pictures that he took. We did a little post-production in Lightroom but this is a picture that he really liked and I think it's a fantastic picture so I wanted to showcase that. I upload this into this canvas course and now we're going to try rounding out the corners. So I'm going to take that same shot and you can notice the corners are a little bit rounded. And how I did that is I have the image and then I have the style and then I have a border radius of five pixels. And that five pixels is gonna look different if the image is really large compared to if the image is really small. I would say this is a medium image. This is a 600 pixel wide image. And so it's kind of medium to on the larger end for a canvas course. I think 600 is kind of large. Maybe it's not the full screen width, but you can see that five pixel rounded border. It does have something of an effect. If I scroll down here, then I double that to 10 pixels, and then you can see that's really noticeable. And we're gonna keep going, and we're gonna do a 20 pixel border. Yeah, that's definitely noticeable to the point where it seems a little bit major. And then here is what 50 pixels, a 50 pixel border radius looks like on a 600 pixel wide by 450 pixel tall image and it's quite distinct. And the only thing I did to get that effect is I put style, border dash radius, and then the value of your border right there, the va value of the roundedness of the corner. And this is the difference between 50 pixels, and then if I scroll back up top, then you can see what five pixels looks like. And you can see a few examples in between. But there's one more thing that I can show you, and that's that you don't have to have a uniform border radius. Here's one where you notice the border radius on the top left corner is different than the bottom right corner, as well as the top right and the bottom left. And so what I did here is I have a border radius of 20 pixels, and that 20 pixel would be the top left corner right there, and then 100 pixels, in this case 100 pixels is the top right and the bottom left, and then 50 pixels as well. If I wanted that bottom left to be something even more different, like 200 pixels, then I would put 20, 100, 50, and then I would put 200 after that because it would go top left, top right, bottom right, bottom left. And if I wanted the top left and the bottom right to be the same, maybe I wanted those to both be 20, then I could replace this 50 with a 20, or I could just put 20 pixels, 100 pixels. And if I did 20 pixels, 100 pixels, that means the top left and the bottom right would be 20, the top right and the bottom left would be 100. If you like this video, then please consider subscribing. I'm going to have more awesome content throughout the summer. And until next time, Happy Disney morning!